The Bramer Hill murders is one of the most notorious homicides to happen in Hong Kong. On the 20th of April 1985, young local British teenagers Kenneth McBride and Nicola Myers were killed brutally by a group of five young gangsters on Bramer Hill in Hong Kong. McBride was found bound, beaten and strangled with over 100 injuries. Meyer's body was found half naked, her jaw broken and her left eyeball out of its socket. Evidence also shows that she was raped. The murders are one of the most disturbing crimes in the history of Hong Kong. Kenneth McBride was 17 years old and Nicola Myers was aged 18. They were a couple and both studied at Island School, Hong Kong, and they were well known on campus. McBride was the president of the students' union, captain of the school rowing team and a member of the debate team. His former teacher, Chris Forsch, described him as smart and loved by the school community. Myers was described as a smart student who had an interest in languages and wanted to be a translator. Simon Boyd, former schoolmates of the couple, described that the couple was close and both of them were popular in school. On the day of the attack, the couple decided to take a walk in the Bramer Hill Country Site, part of the Titan Country Park in the afternoon, located near their residence. Later in the day, they were seated on a remote and quiet pathway on the hillside studying for their A-level examinations. Earlier the same day, a group of five young local gangsters, Peng Shan Yi, age 24, Tam Si Fan, age 20, Chu Wai Man, age 25, Chang Yo Hung, age 17, and Wan Sam Long, age 16, were gathered in the area. According to Wan's evidence, Peng was the leader of the group, and he suggested they steal cable from the government aerial station on the mountain for some extra cash. After several failed attempts to steal the cable, the group spotted McBride and Myers. They decided to have some fun and thought as McBride and Myers were European, they must be rich. Peng led them to rob the couple. Unfortunately, McBride and Myers only had one dollar on them and they tried to defend themselves. The gangs didn't believe the couple and it turned into a fierce attack. McBride was savagely beaten and his hands and feet were tied up. Tam pulled off McBride's Nike shoes and Tam kept the shoes after the murder. The trainers, being a key piece of evidence, presented in court. According to the murderer's statements, Peng verbally threatened the rest of the gang to take part in the attack. He also raped Myers while the other four members were brutally beating McBride. Myers' genitalia were penetrated by a stick and a bottle. After several attacks, he decided the couple must die, as McBride and Myers would be able to identify them. The group left the country park after the murder and destroyed the couple's textbooks. The couple's family realized they were missing when they failed to return home that night. The family searched for them on their own that night, but when they failed to locate them, they then phoned the police. The next day, the couple's body was discovered by a morning jogger. The terrible murder shocked the city and Hong Kong police paid extra attention to the investigation. Over 800 policemen and several personnel from the British forces overseas, Hong Kong, were sent to search the site. They discovered some wooden sticks, which they suspected were used as weapons. Torn exercise books were also found along the hillside, and traces of semen was found on Mayer's body, as well as partial fingerprints on the torn books and the sticks. However, due to the infancy of the forensic science at the time, no sufficient evidence was found to trace the murderer. The police interviewed more than 10,000 people who lived around the area and triad members, but nothing was found. The murder shocked the community, especially as the murders involved two Britons being killed, which was extremely rare. A few months after the murders, an anonymous local Hong Kong businessman donated $500,000 to the Royal Hong Kong Police as a reward for anyone with sufficient information about the homicide. An anonymous triad member contacted the police, suggesting some unusual activity by one of their members. Peng might show he was involved in the offense. Eventually the police arrested Peng and the rest of the group within 48 hours. Although they had given details of the murders, 
only one pleaded guilty. Peng, Tem, and Chu were found guilty by the court and convicted. They were all sentenced to death. Later, it was commuted to life imprisonment in 1993 under the permission given by the governor in Kangzhou. They remain in prison to this day. Two of the other killers, Chang and Wan, were underage at the time of the crime and were sentenced to be detained at Her Majesty's pleasure. After the transfer of sovereignty over Hong Kong in 1997, parents of Wan appealed to the family of McBride and Myers for forgiveness for Wan. In 1998, the family of McBride and Myers announced that they have forgiven Wan for his crime and appealed to the then chief executive Tong Chi Hua for a lesser sentence. The then chief executive agreed and decided Wan will be incarcerated for 27 years and Chang for 35 years. Wan would later say upon release in front of press that receiving the families of McBride and Myers' forgiveness was touching and hard to accept and that he will cherish this opportunity to reintegrate fully back into society. Later on, Chang appealed to the court for a lesser sentence, similar to Wan, but on April 6, 2006, the verdict came down denying Chang's request, citing that due to the heinous nature of the crime, 35 years for Chang was more than generous. In the end, Wan was released from Stanley Prison in front of press in 2004 and was last heard being offered clerical work in a law firm through the government's criminal rehabilitation service. In December 2007, Chang was also released and was last heard having been hired as an inspection worker at a public utility. As for the identities of the killers prior to the crime, most of the killers had no prior criminal records beyond misdemeanor. Chang was abandoned by his family at age 4 and left at an orphanage at age 6. When he reached his teenage years, he was taken back in by his abusive father. He dropped out of school at 14, working menial jobs in restaurants and opening ferry doors. Upon losing his job, he was disowned by his father and was wandering the streets when he was recruited by Peng. Wan Sam Long was a cook at a local restaurant. The leader of the group, Peng, prior to the crime was casual worker and a low-level member of a triad society with the reputation of a bully and a thug. Island School family and friends of the couple have established the Nicola Myers and Kenneth McBride Memorial Fund to support underadvantaged school kids in Hong Kong for further education. In remembering the loved couple and their dream in helping the disadvantaged before their death, McBride's parents have since moved back to their home country of Scotland. You know, this case kind of reminds me of another case that happened, I think, in the United Kingdom. I don't know the exact names, but it was also a couple that was attacked when they were in a park. They were just minding their own business and a group of guys just came up and started beating the hell out of them and also killing the girl in that case as well. This is kind of the same. I always feel sick to my stomach thinking about this because it just sounds so fucking disgusting, man. People that gang up on others with, you know, with more people and it's... It sounds so cowardice and also, as I already mentioned, disgusting. I can't really say anything other than that. I'm also really surprised the family actually forgave some of these suspects for what they did. That's a pretty hard thing to do, I'd imagine, in a situation like that. You have to be really, you know, loving at heart, I guess. I mean, I think it's amazing to some extent, but at the same time, I mean, these guys really did something terribly wrong so I, I don't know how I feel about their sentence man you can leave your thoughts about the sentence I feel it's a disgusting act for all I care they should be in prison all their lives but I understand as well that two of them were underage so in that sense I know the law is easier on people in that case either way I figured I'd share this on creepy news because in the memory of these two young people hopefully they have found peace anyways if you found this story interesting Please hit the like button below. And as always, dear viewer, have sweet dreams. Oh.